So in the United States, it's no secret that a lot of 60 and 65 year olds that are about to hit retirement don't have enough money. Also, a lot of people around age 50 and 55 start realizing, oh no, I'm, I'm behind. And it's like, well, why does this happen? I'm gonna show you an example of a very responsible individual that was in their mid 20s that was trying to develop a financial plan. I'm gonna show you what he was told to do and why these things happen when somebody hits their 40s or 50s, they realize they're doing the wrong thing. And then I'm gonna show you what he could have done to put himself on the right path and what he actually did do. So first of all, let's set up the, the scenario so you know about this individual, okay? I'll call this individual Connor, okay? He graduated with a doctorate degree, doctorate in physical therapy, um, gonna make about 70,000 in the, in the 70s uh, per year, 70K plus per year uh, as a new grad. He um, had about $100,000 in student loan debt, and he was planning on getting married in a year. And his wife was also a PT, making about the same amount of money, but she had no student loan debt. One of their goals was to buy a house, um, probably in about three, three-ish years, three to four years, and they wanted to have three kids. And one of the keys was that when they had kids, his wife wanted to have the option to be able to stay at home if she wanted to. So the first thing that Connor did was he graduated and he called up his loan servicer for student loans and said, what should I go on? Now, the loan servicer told him to go on an income driven repayment plan, which is a loan forgiveness plan. And he thought that that was a recommendation because that's what they said on the phone. Oh, we recommend this. What Connor didn't realize is that by law, they have to tell you your lowest monthly payment and that plan. And for most people, especially with a graduate degree, that income-based repayment plan is gonna have the lowest monthly payment. That doesn't mean it's the best thing for you, but that's what they have to recommend. So he then went to a financial planner and said, okay, they recommended I go on this income-based repayment plan. What should I do based on my goals? And the financial planner doesn't really know anything about student loans. So we said, yeah, well that sounds right because your payment's really low, so now you can start saving more for a house or in your retirement and blah, blah, blah. So the financial planner said, that looks great to me. So then he asked the financial planner, what about buying the house? Like how much house can I afford? And the advisor's like, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm, I'm not a broker for mortgages. I, I don't know, go, go talk to a real estate agent. So Connor went out and started talking to a real estate agent. And the real estate agent basically said, I, I can't really help you um, on how much you can afford because I can just help you buy the house, but I'll introduce you to a mortgage broker. So then he went to a mortgage broker. Okay, and that mortgage broker was like, well, you qualify for $650,000. Okay, and that's one of the big mistakes that people make. They're told what they qualify for and they confuse that with what they can afford. Okay, so when Connor came to us and he said, this is what I'm being told, can we see what that projection looks like? I said, yeah, let's use our technology and take a look. And then after that, I'll show you some different tweaks you can make to make your life even better. So let's dive right into it. Uh, Connor had his profile built. We come in here to plan summary and let's see what happens. Step one is your day-to-day -day budget. So you can see his income here. He's making about $75,000 a year. And you can see things like clothing and gas and food and so on and so forth that he has here in his profile. And we go to the next section. And this is where we start developing some of our financial plans. So here you can see federal loans. He was gonna go on to uh, an income-based plan called pay as you earn. And that he was then gonna start saving for a down payment for a house. So he's gonna start saving about $813 uh, a month. His employer was giving him a 3% match in his 401k, so he wanted to get that. And then he wanted to contribute to his Roth IRA, so that's what he did. Um, the next section in here, you can see that he was paying a little bit for health insurance as well as disability insurance. So that was on there as well. And the next section is where you know the important stuff comes in. This is the life events that he had talked about with the financial planner. He was getting married in a year, so you can see that we put this life event in there. So $75,000 is his spouse's future income. 
Um, he didn't have to pay for the wedding. They weren't, they were just going to do a civil ceremony and his spouse didn't have any federal loan debt. And you can see here underneath buy a house, the $650,000 house, a three and a half percent down payment that they would have to have. And then you can see here after they bought the house about a year later is when they plan on having children and they want to have children uh, every two years after that. So the first child in your uh, four years from now, second child in six years, last child in eight years. So let's see what happens with this financial plan when we do a simulation. Okay. I'm going to scroll down here and pass this information up here and I'm going to come to this total net wealth. And you can see right around here about 15 to 20 years from now that net wealth starts to actually decline at a very quick pace. What happens is in about 15 to 20 years from now so that's about 45 years old for him which is what I was saying when most people realize uh oh I did the wrong thing. At about 45 years old, his plan would completely blow up. Meaning, if his wife decided to stay at home, she they wouldn't be able to do this. They couldn't pay their student loans, they couldn't pay for their mortgage, they couldn't afford the children. And so what this projection is saying is the only way you can do that is if you start adding credit card debt, right? And that's not gonna be feasible. And that's where a lot of people are like, oh no, well what do I downsize, what do I do this? And in a lot of people's situations, like in his wife situation, she would have to stay at work. She would have no choice whatsoever. Okay. And that's why you start hearing people about burnout and feeling like they got the, the handcuffs on. They can't quit. They're in the rat race. That is the rat race. They, they didn't have a good financial plan and they didn't find out until 15 or 20 years into it. So what could we do? better. First and foremost, with our technology, all I have to do is click build a new plan. We're going to name this one Fitbox's plan. And come in here, we're going to basically copy the plan that we just did. And on step one, we don't need to change anything. His income and his current expenses, they don't change. But here underneath assets and debt, First of all, we know student loans inside and out. So we know based on his goals of getting married, his spouse's income, all this type of stuff, what she wants to do in terms of staying at home, there's no reason for him to be going on an income driven repayment plan. So the first thing we do is say, hey, instead, let's try to actually pay off the loans as fast as we can. So we changed this to an extended plan and we said, hey, let's do about 25% of your income going towards your student loans every single month. So you can see that's about a little bit over $1,500 a month going towards his loans. He can hit save. And because he came to us, we said, look, do one thing at a time. Don't worry about the house right now. Pay off your loans first, get married, and then go out and start saving for the house. Because we thought that he could potentially pay this off in three or four years and then save afterwards for the house. So we don't need to save this here. And then he said, okay, well, I still want to contribute a little bit of something to my Roth IRA. We said, that's fine. But let's potentially drop this down just a little bit so it's a little bit more affordable and it's about six percent of your income and there you go okay that was his financial plan that he came to us now that was the first thing that we changed was his student loan repayment plan instead of an income driven repayment plan we said hey try to pay off your loans asap the next thing that we did was we came in here to these life events we also said hey like this is how much you qualify for for a house is six hundred fifty thousand. But based on one of our other tools that we have, we were saying, hey, you can probably afford about 400000 And he said, yeah, that's really good. Actually, in, the, in where I live at, a $400,000 house is actually more my type of style. It's smaller. I don't have to take care of as much, and it would be perfect for us. And we can still get enough bedrooms for, for children. So we changed this to 400000 and we changed this down payment to the 3.5%. And then we hit save. And we go in and we say, okay, well, what happens? Now, keep in mind, his wife wanted the option to stay at home. I'm going to scroll all the way down to these life events down here so you can see when these things were happening. So they get married in a year from now. They bought their house at the end of 2024. And they had their student loans paid off about four months later in these projections. So basically now they have their house. They don't have to worry about their student loans. 
then they have their children and they'd have their their loans paid off by about uh, 2046 now what would happen to their finances you can see here if they follow this by the time they hit retirement they would have a net wealth of about 2.6 million dollars so they have their house they had paid off their student loan debt in a couple years they can have their children and most importantly she can stay at home part-time or full-time if she wanted to keep in mind this is their net wealth at retirement if she stayed at home as soon as they had the first child so that's just one way you can build your plan now what they came back and said was well what happens if i wanted to work until my first child was around seven or eight meaning my first child is about eight years old and my youngest is at four what would happen very easily able to simulate that close this you come in here we say build a new plan um say stay working and i can come in here and hit next i'm going to copy this plan here that we just made so we come in here to life events and there's just two things we need to change here at the first child we had said that the spouse was going to no longer work change that she's going to keep working however we're going to add in a new life event that she's going to stop working when her oldest child is eight years old which is going to be around february of 2033 we hit zero income save it go to the next section hit review and compare and let's see what happens and the results come in we're going to scroll down to the bottom and see what this plan would have done in terms of their life events student loans paid off in the same amount of time have their children by 2032 so that's 11 years from now they would have their loans paid off so here's the plan if connor's wife decided to stay at home after the first child turned eight years old let's actually compare this side by side versus if she stayed home immediately upon having the first child. I can come back to this screen and you'll see there's a compare box next to these. Now I can actually compare them side by side. So Fitbucks plan is the one where she stays at home immediately upon having the first child. Stay working is the one where she works until the child is eight, the first child, and then she decides to stay at home. You can see that by retirement, that they would have about $1.1 million more if she worked the additional eight years. Now, if you scroll down all the way down to the bottom, you can also see that they hit their goals a lot sooner. So for example, he, you know, Connor didn't want to be in debt. So in this first situation where she stops working as soon as the first child is born, they wouldn't have their mortgage paid off until 2046. In this one, where she decides, I'm going to keep working until the first child is eight, the mortgage is paid off in about 11 years. So that means they can have three children, their house completely paid, their student loan debt gone, and she has all the flexibility in the word. Now they can decide what is the best thing for them and say, hey, should I keep working? Should I not keep working? And set up a game plan. So just to recap, the very first plan that Connor had was to go to the loan servicer, go to a financial planner, go to a mortgage broker, and if he would have followed that plan, like most people in this country would have, then in 15 or 20 years, his entire financial plan would have blown up. And that's exactly what happens to a lot of people when they hit their 45 year old, 55 year old birthday, all of a sudden they realize, uh oh, I didn't do something right. Now with our technology, Connor is able to say, this is what I should be doing and can simulate it. And with our Fitbus coaches, he was able to say, okay, well, what other things can I do to make this plan even better? And we're able to show them that. You can do the same thing. All you have to do is go to fitbucks.com, click join now, become a free member, build your profile. Once you get to your dashboard, you can use our build a plan uh, financial planning tool. And if you need help, all you have to do is schedule a call with your Fitbucks coach and we'll walk you through it to make sure that we answer your questions and that you're using the technology correctly. If you got any questions, let us know. We look forward to talking to you soon.